welcome back. You're watching a Young Turks special from Jerusalem. In 2015, Israeli startups made $9.5 billion in exits and 150 Israeli companies were listed on the Nasdaq, third largest next to the US and China. As the domestic market for these startups is very small, they think global from the word go. Thus, it is no surprise that Israel is third in the world for US registered patents. There are 300 R&D centers for innovative tech companies like HP, Microsoft, Google and Facebook. Facebook in Israel. I caught up with a few startups based out of Israel. Take a look at their innovations. Now you started Freitos with a bold vision of getting global freight online. Tell us what is Freitos and how does it help its consumers? Freitos is a marketplace for international freight. So we're the same as, you know how you can use Expedia or Kayak or other sites to buy a passenger ticket. We're doing the same thing for international shipping. So if you want to ship a container from Mumbai to Los Angeles, you can find a price on Freitos for that. Now $19 trillion goods globally are shipped every year, but still the logistics industry is incredibly manual. How are you taking on this? challenge. Yeah, it's unbelievable. The, the logistics industry has really gotten very far behind other uh, industries. So when we started, that was very difficult. Now, in 2017, the mood in the industry has changed. Yeah. Several freight forwarders have used Freightos to automate their pricing and even to publish their pricing. Take us through the revenue model. What is the kind of fee that you're charging? Yeah, Freightos has two revenue models. Uh, one is we sell software to freight forwarders and freight carriers to help them to automate their pricing and hmm. if they like also to publish their pricing. The other revenue model is the Freightos marketplace where we help freight forwarders to publish their services and we help import export companies to find shipping services and that's a marketplace model. We take a small percentage from the sellers every time we bring them an order from the buyers. Now you've received 25 million dollars in funding till date. Where have you spent the funds and also are you looking at raising another round? So yeah, Freitas has been using the funds to build our technology to build our massive uh, database of freight pricing right around the world uh, and of course also for sales and marketing. Yes, we will be looking for more funding to continue the rapid expansion, you know, to really build this into the global success that Freitos deserves to be, it will take a substantial capital. Now, last year you acquired a logistics tech startup in Barcelona. Are you looking at any more acquisitions? Our main growth strategy at Freitos is organic, but we're always on the lookout for some shortcuts if there are opportunities to make an acquisition, like there was with an excellent company uh, called Web Cargo Net in Barcelona. If we see other opportunities like that, uh, we won't be shy to make more acquisitions as well. So you entered India only last year. What are the future plans with the Indian market? So India is an important market for us. We work already with a couple of freight forwarders in India. We work with uh, Trade India, the, the portal. India is such a large country geographically that it's not only the um, shipping in yeah, and out of India yeah. which is an issue, but the trucking within India is the big issue. In some areas the roads aren't so good. Uh, so we need to think not just about our, what we normally think about, which is the air and ocean, yeah. but also the trucking and rail are a huge issue in India. Diagnostics is pioneering an innovative computer vision platform for fully automated blood diagnostics. Tell us how. We are able to take a drop of blood and with a unique sample preparation process, process that we invented, yeah. we are able to prepare it for uh, our device to examine it. And we have algorithms that we are trained based on mm -hmm. a very large data set of images to do exactly what a person will be able to do with the eye. I believe your first application is the 300 million annual malaria test worldwide. We actually thought about starting with malaria yeah. because first that's a huge problem with not very advanced solutions currently. Sure. And also the, the, the market really needs it and the burdens for or regulation burdens are pretty low. Mm -hmm. and, and we are actually pretty active now in Africa and India in many different places. So who is your target audience? How many devices have you sold till date? And how many tests have you performed? So we sold almost 100 devices and over 200,000 tests. And we sold devices uh, in, in several uh, cities in, in India, including Delhi, uh, where Dr. Olal is our uh, largest customer, yeah. Dr. Olal Fast Labs, and uh, Bangalore, Chennai, uh, Apollo Hospital, so we, we are working with, with several large customers. So what are the future plans? Take us through some of your upcoming applications. Malaria is just our first application, which we are excited about, but we are now very deep 
in the development of complete blood count, which is the most common blood test with over 4 billion tests globally annually. LQ. LQ. Yes? What can you do? I can show pictures. Send and receive messages from your loved ones. Start a video call. Play music and suggest activities. Sure, you've built a social companion robot to impact the lives of millions of older adults. Tell me, how will your robot LEQ help them? So LEQ is all about uh, becoming an active aging companion for older adults to help them fulfill their own goals on how to age, yeah. to help them be more connected and engaged and uh, communicate with their families. The first main thing she does is she helps uh, families and older adults communicate yeah. by basically allowing them to share pictures and smileys and content, but then for the older adults to very frictionlessly and very easily res um, see that content and respond to that through a voice control system. So what is the USP of LEQ? How is it different from assistants like Siri or Alexa? Yeah, so LEQ is extremely different from Alexa or Siri in that, that these products are reactive, meaning they wait for the user to say, Alexa, play me some music. Yeah. Here, LEQ actually has a cognitive ability. She's fully autonomous, she sees, she listens, and she analyzes the scene. And then she um, figures out, based on the goals you set, is this a good time to interrupt you? Okay. And if so, should I offer you maybe to go for a walk? Sure. Or maybe I should say, hey, let's listen to some Frank Sinatra. Or maybe she should remind you to take your medicine on time. How soon will we see LEQ hit the market? Uh, we're starting trials now. And basically, based on the feedback of the trials, we'll see how great the experience is. We really want there to be a delightful experience for the product. Sure. It's not trivial to expect older adults to build a meaningful, emotional relationship with a robotic companion. Exactly. Uh, yeah. It's not obvious for us to expect that people that are traditionally laggards in adoption of technology will actually be able to use this, although we're working very hard to make the interaction intuitive. Okay. Um, so based on the re those results, we'll decide when we're going live into the market. So what is the price? point at which LEQ will be available in the market and what is the kind of revenue model that you've devised for Intuition Robotics? It will most likely have a component of an upfront fee and a monthly service because we do provide a service. Okay. Um, we hope that it, um, or we expect it to be um, along the lines of other high-end sophisticated consumer electronic products to start. It is safe to say that the air is filled with the innovation spirit wherever I go. Time now for a short break, but when we return, I bring you more innovations from Israel. Stay tuned.